Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. Back down here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom. And I wanted to shoot a quick video down here to go kind of with this powder series that we're working on with the 21st Century Long Hunter reboot. And I wanted to talk to you about rub cloth. And if you're making your own powder, then you obviously have the ability to make your own rub cloth. And rub cloth has some distinct advantages over normal charred cloth. And we'll talk about that as we go. I'll give you some demonstrations to show you that in this video. But the first thing I want to talk about is making this rub cloth. So we've got some of our black powder here. Now, really the best time to make this rub cloth would probably be before you ever granulate this stuff, right out of the mill when you've got dust. And all you're going to do is take some 100% natural material, and I've just put it into a Sierra cup here and dampened it so that it is wet, okay, to the touch. And then I'm going to take some of this black powder and I'm going to sprinkle it in. Let me adjust this camera just a little bit. Now I'm going to take some of this black powder, and again, this is why I would use the dust, because I haven't gone through all the steps I need to go through with this black powder at that point, because now I'm just trying to make a slurry, but I don't want it to be too, too wet. So I'm going to wring that out a little bit. I've got it blackened up now, and now I'm going to put some more powder in here, and I'm going to saturate this cloth with that powder really well. I'm going to wring it out a couple more times really good so it's just damp and I'm going to add a little more powder again this is why the dust works so good now you can take this out and you can spread it out like this and lay some powder on it and you can really rub it in and this is where the word rub cloth comes from you're rubbing this powder into the cloth It's not a big, long, drawn-out process or anything. Just a matter of getting a good coating of powder on here. Okay. Now we'll let this dry. We'll talk about the next step here in just a minute. So I want to talk real quick about a couple things in this 21st Century Long Hunter series. And one of them is rub cloth. And now that you've made the powder, you can then make rub cloth. And rub cloth has some distinct advantages over char cloth. And char cloth, although it's thought to be kind of an archaic fire method and uh, you only need that if you've got flint and steel, I would disagree with that altogether because char cloth gives you a long burning live ember, depending on what you're using for the charred media that you can then blow to flame instead of striking a ferro rod four million times into something that may be marginal and need to be heated up the surrounding area before it will combust and heat it up to combustion temperature. However, with charred cloth, the ferro rod struck very lightly, just enough to throw sparks, will ignite that, conserving that resource greatly and allowing you to use that charred material just like you would with flint and steel in much easier fashion for ignition. So I'm going to demonstrate that to you, but there are some distinct disadvantages as far as how frail that material is, how susceptible it is to things like moisture, and how much of it you need, depending on what you're trying to do, and how much of it you can make. But at the same time, the fact that you have to then pick that bundle up and blow it to flame and coax it to flame is also a disadvantage compared to rub cloth, because rub cloth being made from the black powder has an oxidizer already in it, in the potassium nitrate so that it actually will flame up in your tinder bundle. And if you've got a decent tinder bundle, it will then combust into flames all by itself. If not, it will burn long enough that you can definitely blow on it and get it to flame. So we'll see what we can do with that today. But I wanna show you this char cloth situation first and talk through that. And then I wanna show you the difference. All right, now strictly for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna pull out this char tin, and this char tin contains rub cloth and char cloth. So here's some rub cloth that we made a little while ago on video. And here's some charred cloth made out of the exact same material. Now you can see number one, this is reduced in size by about two thirds of what it was. Whereas the rub cloth is exactly the same size we started with. So there's no reduction in surface area of the material. 
although the pores are opened up greatly on this because it's been charred. Now, where I say char cloth has an advantage even with the ferrocerium rod is, I'll just pull a little piece of this off of here for demonstration purposes. And I'll hit that with a ferrocerium rod very, very lightly, and you'll see that it will immediately turn to an ember. Boom, there it is. There's an ember already there. Now, the more of this char cloth I use, obviously the larger the ember becomes and the more long lasting it is. However, I'm still gonna have to add oxygen to it to get it to flame up, all right? Now, the rub cloth on the other hand is not frail whatsoever. It is a little bit susceptible to moisture, but not as bad as char cloth is. And we can take a marginal material like this aspen bark bundle here that's been processed fairly well, but not perfect. We can set this inside this bundle and kind of fold it up like this. And just kind of set it on its side and throw sparks into the bundle. Now, if it didn't flame up right away, I'll just stand back and add oxygen. Boom. All we had to do is get that to combustion temperature. That was really a marginal tender bundle. It's been sitting outside and it's raining right now, so it's very damp. But you can see the power difference of that material compared to charred cloth. All right, guys, listen, I appreciate you joining me out here today for this quick demonstration on rub cloth. I've done videos on rub cloth in the past, but I really wanted to kind of touch on the difference and the advantages between rub cloth and charred cloth. And you see, I had to add oxygen to that rub cloth fire as well, but you have a much larger ember that's already heated that bundle super hot from the explosion of that black powder basically inside there or the combustion of that black powder. So you have a large surface area that you're blowing hot embers on already, not one concentrated small ember that you'd get from like char cloth. So I hope you guys can understand the difference there when you saw it on video. Didn't come out as good as I wanted it to, but it's not too shabby of a demonstration. There's definitely a lot more power with that black powder in the cloth than there is with normal charred cloth. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Alliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. Appreciate you guys joining me for this video today. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video in this 21st Century Longhunter series as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.